so when it comes to finding the centroid of plane area, we apply the Varignon's theorem. Varignon's theorem simply says the moment of the whole area is equal to the sum of the moment of small area. So we know that the whole area is the sum of small areas, of all the small areas. So the moment of whole area equals sum of moment of small area. When we say moment, it's equal to the quantity, whether it is a force, an area, a volume, an arc. So it is the area or the quantity times the distance of its centroid from the axis of reference. So let us say that that distance is z bar. So when you multiply this area by its centroid from reference, you have to multiply also this one by its distance of its centroid from the reference. That is z. Let me explain it with an illustration. We're asked here to find the location of centroid of this T area or T section measured from the top, meaning our reference is this top axis or line. So the centroid of this small area, let me call this area 1 and let me call this area 2. This one is area 2, this one is area 1. The centroid of this is going to be at its center here. So the centroid of this area 2 is at its center, right? So since this is the reference, let me call the distance of area 1 from the reference as y1 and the distance of centroid of area 2 from the reference as y2. Since the centroid of area 1 is here, the centroid of area 2 is here, so the centroid of the whole area is in between this and this. Let us say this one. And let me call its distance from the reference as y bar. We need here y bar. We are sure that the centroid is along this vertical line, the axis of symmetry. Okay? So, in here we say that area 1 equals 20 by 120. So, this is going to be 2400 millimeter squared. While area 2 is equal to 40 by 80, so this is going to be equal to 3200 millimeter squared. So that our total area is area 1 plus area 2. So this is going to be this plus this. This is going to be 5600 millimeter squared. Now we want y bar. So we say applying Varignon's theorem if the total area is equal to a1 plus A2. If you multiply this by its distance from the centroid, which is Y bar, you got to multiply this also by Y1 and Y2, by their respective Y's from the reference axis. Okay? So Y's are measured from the reference axis because it is said that the location must be measured from the top. So the total area is 5600 multiplied by y bar. Area 1 is 2400. Y1, if this is 20, so y1 is 10. Plus area 2, which is 3200 times y2 from here to the reference axis, if this is 80, this must be 40 plus 20, so y2 is 60. So this is times 60. This is one equation in terms of y bar, so we will be able to get y bar. And using our calculator, we will get it as 38.57 millimeters. You follow? So all you need to do, if you multiply the left 
by y bar, multiply each area by y also. If you multiply this by x bar, you've got to multiply each area by x also. If you multiply this by z bar, multiply this, the small areas, by z also. You get it? How do we locate the centroid when it is not a regular area? Let us say this one. We're asked here to find the location of the centroid of the area bounded by this line and this parabola. So the first thing to do is to solve for the points of intersection. So we need the points of intersection for our plotting purposes and for our limits. Okay? So the equation of the parabola is x squared equals y plus 4. Let me call it curve number 1. So this parabola is a parabola positive in the linear y. It means if it is positive in y, it opens towards the positive y, meaning it is opening upward. And its vertex is at point. Equate the x squared part to 0. So x squared is 0. x is 0. Equate the linear term to 0, y plus 4 is 0, so y is negative 4. So this is your parabola. It opens up vertex at 0 minus 4. We will plot it later. Now the equation of the line is y equals 2x plus 4. Okay? So this is equation number 2. So to solve the points of intersection, we solve them simultaneously. Since this is second degree, this is linear, we solve it by substitution. So substituting 2x plus 4 for y in the first equation, so we will be having here x squared equals y, which is 2x plus 4 plus 4. So move everything to the left, you'll get here x squared minus 2x, 8, move to the left, minus 8 equals 0. You can solve the x here in your calculator using quadratic formula of your calculator. So if you solve that, you'll get here x to be equal to 4 and minus 2. So when x is 4, substituting it here, y is 2x plus 4, 2 times 4, that is 8, plus 4, 12. So y is 12. And when x is minus 2, 2 times minus 2, that is minus 4 plus 4, 0. y is 0. So your points of intersection are minus 2, 0, and 4, 12. So let me plot the line and the parabola. Let us say that this is our y-axis and this is our x-axis. So when x is 4, y is 12, let us say that x is 4 is here, y is 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, here. So this is 4, 12. And then x is minus 2, y is 0, let us say it's this one. So this is minus 2, 0. Both the line and the parabola pass through these points. So interconnecting them, this is our line. Our parabola that opens up also passes through this and this, and the vertex is at 0, negative 4. 0, negative 4 is here. Okay? So that parabola is this one. So, we want to find the location of the centroid of this area. Okay? So, before we can solve the area or the centroid, we need to solve first the total area. Because we need the total area in the equation. 
So let us solve the total area here. So we will go back to the principle of solving the area. So we will be using again the differential area approach. Remember the concept. When you define or you know DA, once you integrate DA, integral of DA is A. Because integral is inverse derivative of derivative, they cancel each other out. So the principle is that. So our concept is to define a differential strip. Shall we use vertical or horizontal? If we use horizontal, take note that the curves are the line and the parabola. The parabola we call curve number one, while the line, this one, we call curve number number two, right? So if we will use horizontal, horizontal is from left to right. On the left is line, on the right is the parabola. So on the left is line, on the right is parabola. However, we will have a problem here. On the left is parabola, on the right is parabola. It's different from this. You get it? So horizontal strip will not be used here. If you will insist on doing horizontal strip, it's also okay. However, you will do two integrations. One integration for line left, parabola right. Another integration for parabola left and parabola right. You get it? So, however, if I'm going to use vertical strip, this line is always on the top. This parabola is always on the bottom. Look at the extremes. Here, line at the top, parabola at the bottom. Anywhere you do vertical strip, it will always be the line on the top, parabola at the bottom. Even here, line at the top, parabola at the bottom. You get it? So we will be using vertical strip. Let me use here a representative strip. So let us say I take this vertical strip. This one. So this is a very small change in x. So this is dx. While this one is not a dy. Because it is a big change in y. It must be y above minus y below. y above minus y below. The one above is the line. The one below is the parabola. y of the parabola. Okay? So, this one is y line minus yb. So that when we define the differential area, the differential area is the area of the differential strip. It will be the length times the thickness. The length is y of the line minus y of the parabola. And the thickness is dx. In as much as we are dealing here with dx, before we can integrate, this must be expressed in terms of x. For the line, the equation of the line is y is 2x plus 4. So the y of the line in terms of x is 2x plus 4. So substituting that, this will be 2x plus 4. So this is y of the line. Minus y of the parabola. The y of this parabola, you solve this, y is x squared minus 4, right? So it would be x squared minus 4. So this is the y of the parabola. Times dx. Now as you can see, everything here is in terms of x. Let me simplify a little bit more. So this is going to be 2x plus 4 minus minus 4 plus 4. This is plus 8 minus x squared dx. In as much as dA is already all in terms of x, we are ready to integrate. Integrating both sides, integral of dA is a. So all we need to do is integrate this but specify the limits. This is dx. Every term must be in terms of x. That includes the limits. 
When we talk of X, it is horizontal. And when we say limits, they are extremities. It must be the extreme left to extreme right. So extreme left of the area here, the X is minus 2. Extreme right, the X here is 4. So the limits must be from X is minus 2 to X is 4. You follow? So integrating this in your calculator, you'll be able to get the area. And the area is 36 square units. So we are now ready to locate the centroid. Let us say that the centroid of this whole area, by inspection, it must be somewhere here. Okay? So this is our centroid. Let me call the centroid of the whole area as point G, which is X bar, Y bar. Its coordinates are X bar, Y bar. This is X bar. This is Y bar. Now the centroid of the differential strip, this one, since this is a rectangle, it is at the middle. So it is x average y average okay its distance from the y axis is x average its distance from the x axis is y average in as much as we are dealing with dx x average will be x y average is y1 plus y2 over 2 y parabola plus y of line over 2 you get it Okay, let's do it. Now, to find the centroid, let us apply Varignon's theorem. Let us initially take it about the y-axis. We say that the total area is the sum of differential areas, right? Look at integral symbol. It looks like an S, right? It has the same function as summation except that this integral is the partner of infinite semi small areas or very small areas. Okay? So integral of dA or sum of dA's is A, right? So this is going to be our equation. So when you multiply this by x bar, you'll have to multiply this also by x the distance of centroid of da from y axis but x is x average so same thing when you multiply this by z bar you multiply this by z when you multiply this by x bar multiply this by x average their respective distances of their centroids from the y axis so let us substitute our area from previous computation is 36 times x bar equals sum of dA. dA is A one step before integration. Your dA is this one, right? Correct. So dA is 2x plus 8 minus x squared d x times x average x average in terms of x is x so these are all in terms of x this is ready for integration the only thing you have to indicate is or are the limits this is dx our limits must be x x left most to x right most the x here is minus 2 the x here is 4 so this is from minus 2 to 4 so solving this divide by 36 that will be your x bar and our x bar is so this is going to be equal to 1 1 unit so our problem now is y bar so let us go back here. The total area is the sum of differential areas. So if you multiply this by y bar, you will also have to multiply this by y 
average, right? So, substituting our area is 36. Our DA, what is DA? Our DA is A one step before. So, before integration, DA is equal to this one. But I will go back two more steps. So, DA may also be written in this manner. Okay? So, it would be Y of the line minus Y of the parabola times DX. That is your DA, right? Times y average, your y average is y of line plus y of parabola over 2. Okay? The reason why I express this in terms of y first is it is easier to multiply. Okay? So, therefore, we will have here y bar is going to be equal to 1 over 36 if let us factor out the 2, so 3, 1 over 36 times 2, that is 1 over 72 integral of. YL minus YP times YL plus YP product of sum and difference. The answer is difference of two squares. YL squared minus YP squared. DX. In as much as we are dealing with dx, every item here must first be expressed in terms of x. y of line is 2x plus 4. So what is y squared of line? y squared of line will be the square of this. So let me transfer here. Our y bar is going to be 1 over 72 integral of... 2x plus 4 squared minus y of parabola squared. The y of the parabola is x squared minus 4, right? So, therefore, you have x squared minus 4. This is the y of the parabola, but we need here y of parabola squared. So, we square this. Close quantity dx. You follow? I repeat. This is y line squared minus y parabola squared. y of the line in terms of x is 2x plus 4. This is y of the line squared. y of the parabola is x squared minus 4. This is y of the parabola squared. y line squared minus y parabola squared. Everything is in terms of x. This is ready for integration. We just have to put the limits. This is dx. Every item must be x, including the limits. It must be x left most. This one, x is minus 2, to x right most, where x is 4. So this is from x is minus 2 to x is 4. So, you integrate this, you'll be getting y bar is going to be, so this is 12 over 5 or 2.4. You get it? So, therefore, our y bar, our centroid is at x bar, y bar, it is at 1, 2.4. These are the coordinates of the centroid. You follow? So you just begin with the concept of the total area equals sum or integral of differential area. Multiply this by x bar. You will also have to multiply this by x average. Multiply this by y bar. You will have to multiply this also by y average. You follow? That is Varignon's theorem. You get it?